In this video, we are going to go through MySQL and we're going to set up a server, a master server that we're going to be using for our website to gain access to some data. And then we are going to go through the process of setting up a clone MySQL database and copying the data over to the clone, restoring it, and then starting up the clone. So we'll kind of go through the whole process. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the server that we're going to use as our main master server. Um, and so to get started, we want to install, and this is an Ubuntu installation, um, but it works pretty much the same uh, on most of the Linux processes or Linux servers. So what we're going to do is in this case, I'm already root. So we're just going to type apt get or I'm sorry, apt install MySQL dash server. And that's going to go out and actually install the server um, so that we can start using it. And I've already done this on the server, so I'm not going to actually go sit and wait for all that to happen. Um, but that will get the server installed. Now, the next thing that you want to do right after that installation is you want to, to type uh, MySQL secure installation and go through the steps for it. Um, you're basically just uh, setting a root password, disabling the temp accounts or the temp database and the test database and that kind of thing so that the, the server is secure. Um, so it's a fairly simple process. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through and waste time doing that because it is very straightforward. Now, once you get that done, we have a database server and we can start setting up databases and doing all that kind of stuff. There's a couple different ways to, to deal with this situation. If you're going to set up the master and the client, the clone at the same time, then it's a, a little bit less work because we're not having to export and import databases. We basically set them both up and I'm going to go through that process first because it is the simplest. Um, so the only thing that we have to do on the server itself, there's a couple things, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to etc MySQL and go to MySQL conf D and we're going to VI the MySQL.cnf file. And then what we want to do is we want to, there's a couple things we need to change here. So the first thing is up here at the top of this file, there is a binding address that's going to be a local address to begin with, which it basically restricts you to being able to only access the database from uh, a browser or something that's running on the same server. But in our case, we want to be able to get to it from a web store or from some other server. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change this to our local address. So whatever the IP address is for this server is what we want to actually set this to. The next thing that we're going to do, and I'm only covering this from the perspective of setting up a server, um, a clone and a master server. So I'm not going through all the settings in here, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uncomment search for server dash ID and we're going to uncomment this line by default. It is it's commented out and we're going to set the value to one. This is basically telling the system that this is the number one server. It is the, the server that is going to be treated as the master. Um, and then you can also uncomment the log underscore bin file so that you can, uh, so that it knows where to write the, the bin log. So basically what happens when you set up a master clone is the master database begins to log every single transaction that comes into the system. And by transaction, I'm saying every query, basically every statement, it starts to log that information into a bin file. And then the client is going to get notices as to the updates that are happening. And it will then start inserting the same records into its table. So it's, it's basically like if I run an update query on, on the master server, that same update query is sent over to the client so that it can run the same uh, query. Now I'm going to explain how the, how they talk to each other in just a moment. But right now we're only looking at the, the setup. So we, we uncomment these two lines. We've set our IP address up at the top. And so now all we're going to do is we're going to do a service MySQL restart. And that's going to go in and actually tell it to restart the, the MySQL server. Now, the last thing that we have to do on the server is we want to log in. And if you did your secure thing, we've got to make sure you put the root password to get in. And then what we want to do is we want to create 
a user account that the client is going to use to log into the server as the replicator account. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to type create user. We're going to name it. So we'll do, I'll just call it replicator. And then we're going to say at, and then we're going to do a percent here. And what I'm doing is I'm telling it that for the whole database server, we're going to have this account. So it has access to every single database that's on this system. Um, and then we're going to say identified by, and then we're going to put in our password and uh, a semicolon. So this is just a, a MySQL command to create a user and we're just giving it a name. So this is, un, this is not unlike any other user account that you would create on a MySQL server. The next step though is what is, is, is uh, important. And so what we're going to do after we create the user is we're going to grant and we're granting access to replication for that, that uh, user account. So we're going to say, uh, replication slave on every database to replicator replicator at so again what we're doing now we created the user account and now we're telling it that we want to grant that user account the ability to do replication on this master server now, once we get that done, we need to flush our privileges so that the, the system knows to, so the, the system knows to uh, refresh its uh, login or user information so that it, it knows that this particular account has access to everything. So now, at this point, the master server has the ability to allow client or clones to replicate it. So if we do not have any databases loaded on the server yet, there really is nothing else we need to do on this server. So for the moment, we're going to stop on this server and we're going to go over to our clone server and take a look at what we need to do over there to get it uh, working. So I'm just going to jump over to the clone now. And so again, I am going to install the thing with apt install MySQL dash server, exact same process, secure the server, just like we did a minute ago. We're going to go to ETC MySQL and we're going to go into the MySQL conf D uh, folder and we're going to VI the CNF file, but this one's a little bit different. So the first thing is we're going to uncomment these two lines again for the server ID and the log bin. But this time, instead of changing it to server one, we're telling it it's server two. Now, if you're going to set up two replication servers, then the third one would be three. The fourth one would be four. So all you're doing literally is incrementing this number. Okay. And so the other thing we want to do is we want to go up here to the top and also change the IP address that we had earlier uh, to be the IP of this local machine. Now, this is... Uh, primarily if we end up having to switch this over to being an actual server because the master server crashes for some reason and I'll do a separate video on how to deal with that situation. Um, and so again, we're going to save the file and then we're going to do a service MySQL restart and that will restart the server with the ability or with the knowledge that it now is a clone server of the main server. So now we're going to log in to this particular server. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of getting this server uh, set up to replicate. So we've already gone in and changed the bind address and the server ID and restarted the server. And so the last step, and we're just doing this to make sure that we aren't already slaving, but typically this would not be the case if this is a fresh install, but we're going to tell it to stop the slave. And then what we want to do is the following. We're going to type change master to, so we're telling it that we're going to change the master over to master host, and we're going to set that equal to and we're going to do the, here we're just going to put in the IP of the other computer. So we're just going to say 192.168.79.133. So this is our IP address of the master. 
then we're going to hit enter, put a comma at the end, hit enter. Um, and this is just to keep this a little bit easier to look at. Um, and so we're going to say master user equals, and in our case, it's replicator, comma. And then we're going to say master underscore password equals, and we whatever we created for the, the password. And then master log. Okay, this part is not necessary. This this what I'm fixing to type in here is not necessary if you've got two clean databases that no or database servers that no databases are on yet. Um, in the in that case, what you would really do is the comma that I have up on the master password line would actually be a semicolon, and you would not have to type in what I'm what I'm about to type in. In fact, I'm not even going to type it in because. Um, we we don't need it, so I'm just going to error out of that that line. But all you're really going to do in in this case is where where we had the master password line, we're just going to put a semicolon at the end of it. And so at this point, we have told the replication server, the clone server, that it is to replicate itself from the master server at 133 address. We told it the username and password to log into it. And so the last thing that we need to do is we're just going to type in start slave. And as soon as I do this, what is going to happen is the slave server is going to communicate to the master server and it's going to say, hello, I am supposed to be replicating your data with this user account and password. The replication, the master server is going to authenticate it to make sure that it has the right information. And from that point forward, what is going to happen is every time, and I'm going to flip over here, is every time that you do that, the, the, top, the bottom two lines are examples of what happens. And so that server is the one that you're going to be updating and inserting records and creating databases and all that kind of stuff. And every time you do that, the information that is over there, that query that you ran to run the update or do the insert, the master server is going to communicate with the client. So right here, you can see this is the master server. We inserted a record over there on the master server. It communicated with the clone. So the, it's not the clone talking to the master. It's the clone attaches itself to the master. That, that opening stays or that connection stays open. And now the master has the ability to send information down to the clone. And so, Every single time you do an insert or update or delete or whatever it happens to be on that master, it is communicating back down the line to the clones and then it passes the information down to that particular server to tell it to re-execute the statement that just got ran on the master. And so I'm not going to get into the, the nitty gritty details as to how it's doing that and, and what it's doing with those log files. Um, but basically, as, depending on how busy the server is and how slow the clone is, um, typically they're doing this through memory. So they're, they're not actually, the client isn't actually accessing the log file on the server through the hard drive. It's actually doing it through memory. And so it's very, very fast. Um, now, if the client gets the clone gets behind the master, then it could start to have to make additional requests to get information out of the log file because the master no longer has it in memory. But that would be a very very busy se server and a very slow clone um, that's going to get you into that position. But generally speaking, they stay fairly well synced with each other. Now, before I close this video, I do want to mention that there is. A potential problem when you're dealing with auto increment numbers inside of your your database tables um, where there is a potential if depending on how busy the servers are and the the multi-threaded environment that the server runs in versus the single threaded environment that the clone runs in that the things will get out of sync like your auto ink that you have attached to one invoice ends up being attached to a different invoice on the clone because of you know the, the fact that that they just didn't sync up right, um, it, it's 
pretty rare that that happens. Um, and, and I actually have not been able to cause that to happen in our environment, but it is something that you need to, to keep in mind if you're trying to set something up like this. Um, and there, you can Google it. There are, uh, some hashing algorithms and stuff that you can use to, to check the tables between the server and the master to make sure that they are still in sync. Um, but that's uh, another video entirely. So in, in this respect, and I'm probably just going to end this video here. Um, and I'll do another video on how to, how to set this same environment up, um, and add in the added ability or added com complication of already having data in the master database before you do this, um, so that we don't make this video too long, but you basically are setting up the master, putting that server ID in there for one, restarting it, setting up your replicator account, then coming over to the client, setting its server ID as two, and create the actual process that's going to link it to that replicator account to the whatever server you want it to replicate and then starting the clone uh, with the clone start command so or the start slave command so uh, i'm going to do another video on how to set it up if there's already data and we'll also do a video on what to do if there's a problem and we need to actually turn the slave into the master